Hi, my name is Fabio. I am from the Cisco Tech Telepresence team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove an Expressway server from the cluster, factory reset it, and add it back. In this example, I have a cluster of two Expressways. My primary server is working correctly, but the secondary peer is misbehaving. And when I check the system clustering page on the primary server, the secondary peer shows up as clustering failed. I also have some alarms on my secondary peer about database communication failures and cluster replication errors. There are several methods to troubleshoot clustering problems. However, in some scenarios, TAC might recommend you to remove the misbehaving peer from the cluster, factory reset it, and add it back. These procedures are described in the Cisco Expressway Cluster Creation and Maintenance Deployment Guide, which I will be following in this demonstration. In this scenario, my secondary peer can be accessed via its web admin page. So let's follow the instructions from the Remove a Live Peer from a Cluster Permanently section. Let's start by navigating to System Clustering on the peer I need to remove and clearing out all the entries in the peer fields. Let's save the changes. And as you can see, this brings up a confirmation window, letting me know that this server's configuration will be lost. This is because the next restart will automatically trigger a factory reset. After the reset, only the following configuration items will be preserved, including the LAN1 IP addressing, and the admin and root passwords. The server certificate information will be removed, however, if using version 12.6 or later, so it's advised to manually back it up. To do this, connect to your expressway by using WinSCP or a similar program, navigate to the Tanberg persistent search directory, and copy to your local computer the server certificate file, its corresponding private key file, and the file containing the trust store. Now we're ready to restart the server and let it revert to its default settings. While this finishes, we now have to go to the primary server, navigate to system clustering, delete the address of the server we are removing from the cluster, and save the changes. If there were other healthy cluster peers in place, we would need to repeat this same step on each one of them. Now, after some minutes, the secondary peer is back up, and as mentioned, we can access its web admin page by using the same LAN1 IP address it had originally, and the same admin password. Now, let's follow the Preparing Expressway to Join a Cluster procedure from the guide. Let's start by navigating to System, Network Interfaces, IP, and double-checking that the IP configuration is correct. Next, let's navigate to System, Time, and set up a valid NTP server. Next, under System DNS, let's configure the server's domain name and hostname and the DNS server address. Now, let's navigate to Configuration, Protocols, H323, and set H323 mode to on. This is a requirement because the cluster peers use this protocol to share information between each other. Finally, let's restore the certificate files we backed up. Navigate to Maintenance, Security, Trusted CA Certificate, and upload the CA.PEM file we saved earlier. This restores all the trusted CAs that we had before the reset. Now, let's navigate to Maintenance, Security, Server Certificate, and upload the private key and the server certificate files that we had backed up. A restart is required for these changes to apply.
Finally, we can follow the instructions on the Add Appear to a Cluster section of the guide. Let's go back to the primary peer, navigate to System Clustering, add back the address of the secondary peer, and save the change. If we had other working cluster peers, we would need to repeat the same step on each one of them. Now, let's go to the peer we need to re-add and navigate to System Clustering and set up this page with the exact same information as on the primary peer. Let's save the changes and restart the server one last time. After the restart, I can now verify that the procedure was successful. The cluster is showing up as healthy in the clustering page on both sides, and the database communication and cluster replication alarms are now gone. I hope this helps, and thank you for watching.